we're gonna we're gonna switch again back to the end of YouTube. Let's hear what Golden Boy has to say about the YouTube CEO changing. Susan Wojcicki is out as CEO of YouTube, and the new CEO is gonna drive this place into the ground. Say goodbye to YouTube as you know it, or at least that's what some people would have you believe. Is it actually true? Is that too reactionary? Well, let's look at the story. Yesterday, Susan tweeted out, after 25 years at Google, I'm out. She had a longer blog post, which goes into her background. If you didn't know, she was a 16th employee at Google. Google was actually made at her childhood garage because her sister was dating Sergey Brin, one of the founders of Google. Crazy. She's been CEO of YouTube for nine years, but you might only know her for a couple things. One, maybe an interview that I did with her. I mean, shit, you're watching me now, so you might have watched this video as well. If you have watched both videos, subscribe. Come on, two videos? I mean, we got something going on here, me and you. Second thing, removing dislikes. But let's be real. What does a CEO of a company that big actually do? I think three things if you had to boil it down. One, you set the course of the ship. What are we doing this year? Are we working on ads? Are we working on shorts? You set the direction that everybody who works at that company has to follow. Two, you hire the people who work on the ship, right? You're not the one who's going to be making the product for the shorts. So you got to hire someone who's really good at doing it and stealing what TikTok does. And then three, you're the public face of the company. So when it inevitably all goes to shit, the blame has to go to someone, and that is usually the CEO. And let's be real, a lot of shit was given to Susan for a lot of the bad products that were given to us by YouTube. <clears throat> Dislikes <clears throat> NFTs. Now, there are some conspiracy theories as to why Susan's leaving YouTube. Why are you out after 25 years? Mainly from right-wing Twitter. But the way it goes is basically... Well, the House of Representatives subpoenaed Susan and some other tech leaders two days ago, and then she left yesterday. Dog, that's the gateway pundit. That's an, in, like, even as far as conspiracies goes, that's like, you know, they, they, they are like, the Democrats are pedophile uh, uh, level conspiracy theorists. So maybe it's a reaction to that. Now, I love a good conspiracy theory. I really do. Moon's made of cheese. I'm in all that shit. Aliens have come to Earth. Hell yeah, they're in Cumtown, Alaska. But I don't really bite on this one. Because, like, what's the logic? She stepped down because she's the fall guy? Like, YouTube forced her out? Eh, I don't really know. Seems a bit too early days for that. The court case hasn't even started. The subpoena hasn't even gone through. Or maybe two. She's trying to cover her own ass, but she's still subpoenaed. It's not like if you step down, they're like, you know what? We're canceling the subpoena. She doesn't work there anymore. She worked there during that, that time, so it wouldn't wouldn't change anything. So I, I don't really get it. But there is a much better video about the entire court case by Legal Eagle if you want to check it out. Don't really need to get into it in this video because it's honestly a bit of a side point, but super worth watching because it is very interesting and will impact the internet. It, actually, this, this title is not that much of a clickbait. What's my theory for why Susan steps down? Well, you might be able to read that tab right there. She's 54 years old, she has kids, and she's fucking rich, dude. She's got a billion dollars. She's worked 25 years. She's done her time. I think she's biased. Covering for his friends. Right wing, mogul male. Covering the secret of why Susan Vajiki left YouTube. He knows the secrets because she's been in his house. Okay, I'll say it. I'll fucking say it. What does he know? What about Benghazi, Lud? Exactly. They're oomphies. I can't trust them. Exactly. They are oomphies. She just wants to chill. I think she wants to hang out with her family. When you die, does 28 years at Google really add up much more than 25 years? Or does hanging out with your kids more and then sipping on Mai Tais at a beach add more fulfillment? With I would Ludwig! Go with, the personally. with Ludwig! That's my theory. By we'll her side! Time. Now we are here to answer the question, is the new CEO going to drive this place into the ground? Because that's what a lot of people would have you believe. And if you don't know who the new CEO is, it's Neil Mohan. And if you don't know, Neil is a seven-year chief product officer at YouTube and like 15 year long employee at Google and YouTube. All right, so, so he been around for a while. Uh, I've actually uh, spoken to Neil before and, uh, and 
bias. Seemed like he knew what live streaming was a little bit. You know, he helped me w make that one product for the chess boxing event where we used different audios like Spanish and French during the broadcast and you could switch it from the live stream. So that was tight. But a lot Bias. of people are giving Neil criticism for good reason because he made a blog post I sent him in this February text message, by the way. that said Web3 opens up new opportunities well, not this for creators. Blog post, but I, but he didn't fucking reply like to me. Blockchain and NFTs can allow creators to build deeper relationships with their fans. Which, saying NFT in a space... I was trying to get the inside scoop. Well, I, I texted a bunch of people. The, I texted a bunch of people the, the fucking, like, this guy. <clears throat> uh, the new YouTube CEO being, like, the NFT shill. But he didn't respond to me. Because, you know, he was too busy fucking making his right-wing commentary, as you can see. Because he's a company man. You know how it is. Mainly with gamers and content creators is kind of like saying, I love this new Kanye beat at a synagogue. Not really the right crowd, not really the right place, and definitely not the right time. Now, he was maybe doing all the NFT things because he was a huge crypto bro. My theory? Well, one, you're in Silicon Valley, right? You're like, you're in the whole tech bubble. You're wearing your Patagonia. You're sipping on blue bottle coffee and you're thinking NFTs are the future. That's, that's maybe a little too insular as opposed to the rest of us who are like, oh, every time this is being done, it's a scam. But also, here's my theory for why YouTube did NFTs. In 2021, a lot of YouTube videos were being sold as NFTs. Successfully. Because creators who make one viral video but don't have a long-term... Bro, there's no way he's trying to defend this guy's, um, oh my god. Biased. Content creator career. Literally defending. Tetris? Yeah, I, I, I saw the Tetris thing. We'll look at it in a second. Um, yeah, biased, bro. Bias. Riding. Don't really earn a lot off of that success, off that 100 million, 500 million view video. But if you could own and sell it, well then maybe that helps you in your life. AKA, I'm talking about how Charlie bit my finger, Nyan Cat, uh, all these videos were being sold as NFTs. And so maybe YouTube just wanted to own that. I think if you look at most of the products YouTube has made over the past five, 10 years, they're usually either stealing from another company, like stories or shorts or live streams, or it's like defensive products because somebody else, a third party, is making money off of YouTube. And YouTube is like, well, wait, hey, if you're doing that, why don't we just own it and make money and have it be embedded? Bro. Or a third thing. Not exactly the smartest guy out there, just like many of these fucking disillusioned tech guys are. That's like, I feel like generally the main core strategy to stay the top dog. So that's, that's my theory why NFTs were added. I'm hoping that he doesn't keep going down the NFT train, but maybe he will. The facts are, it's early days, bro. We are talking about day dot in the tenure, in the reign of Neil as CEO of YouTube. He was chief product officer for seven years. And look, I get it. He does deserve criticism for this shit idea. And if he keeps going down it, that would suck. But... You aren't only your worst idea. I think he also did some other things that people would recognize and be like, oh, okay, that's not so bad. And I think he wanted to let people know that because if anyone that has seen Mark Zuckerberg light almost a trillion dollars of value on fire by pumping a fuckload of money into cryptocurrency, the metaverse, Web3 shit, and is still in the tech space saying, no, 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 we got to do that, but we got to do that right, should be immediately removed from their position of power. Now, my man wants to get an interview with this guy, which makes sense. But I don't personally see... This move, like I said, I uh, I don't personally see this move as like a as like a a move that a smart guy makes. <sighs> it's just like completely insane. It, it is like you bring that up, you bring that up, you bring the NFT thing up. You're like, no, nope, that's the dumbest thing anyone's ever. That's like disqualifying. So we'll see.
especially this far into the game, when we know how bad it is, when we know how bad it was, I would say something along the lines of like, look, that's a bad move. People make mistakes all the time. It's like horrendously bad. Hopefully he doesn't uh, continue along that line. Uh, I, I don't even know if there's any reason why you would try to get into the NFT game like that. Especially because the way that he promoted the NFTs wasn't as like a defensive mechanism. Like Ludwig's justification here is that like, is an understandable one, Right. It's why you would defend, it's how you would defend it if you were to defend it at all. Right? But ultimately, but ultimately, um, I, I, he d didn't even sell it that way. Uh, not, not Ludwig, I'm talking about the dude. He sold it as like revolutionary new technology that we definitely need to be a part of. In all fairness, wasn't this NFT post a while back pre-fallout? I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, dude, but like if you're, the chief product officer of a fucking company like YouTube, you should know better. If I'm a dumbass, if I am a fucking dumbass Twitch streamer, like an idiot, okay? Because I am. I'm not a very smart person. I'm not a particularly smart person. And I can see that. He should be able to see that. I mean, if, but like, see, I can't even speak right, okay? There you go. That's all you need to know about how fucking stupid I am. And I can see from a mile away. Successfully. Because creators who make one viral video but don't have a long-term content creator career don't really earn a lot off of that success, off that 100 million, 500 million view video. But if you could own it, I'm hoping that he doesn't keep going as CEO. That would suck. But you aren't only your worst idea. I think he also did some other things that people would recognize and be like, oh, okay, that's not so bad. And I think he wanted to let people know that because a few months after that blog post, which got a lot of shit, he posted another blog post that was like, here's seven th things I did that were actually kind of good, guys. Come on. And this is Neil looking cool, crossing his arms. Fan funding. Okay, this is adding super chats and memberships. Biting Twitch's shit, but I respect it. Next thing, shorts. Okay, that's been a huge innovation. Kind of biting TikTok's shit, but I respect it. Third is premieres. Meh. Fourth is YouTube TV, probably the single best innovation that YouTube's had. All right, maybe a hot take. But YouTube TV being so popular, so prevalent, has blown up creators even more than they already were blown up, like Mr. Beast, and also created a lot of new categories and made them way more popular because it's more fun to watch, like, a walkthrough of traveling videos on YouTube TV than it is on your phone or desktop. A lot of 4K creators popped off because of this, too. Anyway... Uh, that's all to say that I am not as nervous as other people. The answer to the question, is YouTube going to go to shit now, is a pretty easy one. You have to ask yourself, do you think YouTube was on the right course over the past five to ten years? And if the answer is no, well then this is going to be more of the same. It's going to be more no. If you think everything that they've done is shit over the past five, ten years, and YouTube was better off ten years ago without Susan, without Neil, well then they're, they're going to keep doing that. I think Neil is more of the same. He worked very closely with Susan, was right under Susan. If you think they're doing good over the past 5, 10, 10 years, well, I think they're going to keep doing good. So it's not up to me to answer the question. I'm just recognizing YouTube TV is YouTube's version of cable TV, which I use and pay for, but also forgot about law. So that section is kind of a wash. I do like it for sports, but it's expensive as a motherfucker. Dude, I'm afraid to report that mogul mail has fallen off, dude. Okay, I'll, I'll like it to support small content creators, but what is this? I remember a time when Mogul Mail was a one-take shake. Japan changed you, Ludwig. It changed you. Sometimes I wonder if, like, people don't know I'm fucking around. Like, there's got to be people in this chat that are like, yeah, this Ludwig guy fucking sucks, huh? He's a, like, I wonder if there are people who legitimately uh, think that one, two, take, 12, take, Tyler? Wow. No longer a one, take, Jake, but a 12, take, Tyler. Is it going to go to shit? It's up to you to answer whether you think they were on the right track, because I think they're going to stay on the, the same track. I don't think there's going to be a huge, myth about you. huge we'll watch that change to what was happening. This is
But I'm also going to find out. So let me know. If you could ask a question to Neil, CEO of YouTube, what would you ask? Because weirdly enough, I had the chance to interview the CEO of YouTube once. Then I somehow got it again. <laughs> Because I just tweeted out at Neil. I said, hey, want to chat sometime? And I'm not even shitting you. It was the first thing he tweeted after being announced as CEO. He said, let's do it. So I'll talk to Neil. I got to ask him about NFTs to see if he likes it. I got to ask him to buy my goose ass NFT because Susan's out and somebody's got to pick up the scraps. I'm owed money, Neil, and I'm coming for it. I've seen the compensation package. It seems pretty decent for CEOs based off how much Susan's made. And then three... What's up with that whole dislikes thing? <laughs> now, I do think Charlie had a really good idea. I mean, come on, it's Charlie. He always has good ideas. It would be a knockout home run win for Neil if he instantly added dislikes back after coming on board. But I doubt he'll do it. Only because internally, it'd be very confusing to be so gung-ho and stand your ground on a product yeah. and then switch up, especially considering he's the chief product officer when dislikes were added. So he probably had a hand in that. But much like Susan did not veto NFTs, I don't think that Neil's going to come on and instantly start adding NFTs to every single video and all of them are fungible or non-fungible. I don't know how it works. Anyway, let me know what you think. Was YouTube on the right path? What questions should I ask? Neil, thanks for watching. Subscribe. See you later. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, shocker. Ludwig had a lukewarm take where it's kind of a nothing burger because the CEOs don't really do much. I mean, look at megalomaniac CEO Elon Musk, but we're still on Twitter. Look at megalomaniac CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Well, that one didn't go. So Ludwig loves the centrist takes, dude. Mr. Centrist take, Andy. This is worse than the fucking capitalist uh, patriarchy uh, that we currently live in. Okay. <laughs> no, fuck, dude. I need to work on Hassan's laugh. Oh fuck, man! What the fuck? That's not how I laugh. This is worse than the. This motherfucker's never heard me laugh, dude. Holy shit! He is so far off, dude. Capitalist. Wait, what the fuck? Uh, patriarchy. Uh, that we. Oh, this is from eight months ago, man. Where did you find this, bro? This is from when Myth was on Twitch, dude. My man is not even on Twitch anymore. I was like, why is this a Twitch clip? Like, that's the first thing that struck out to me.